so I'm out here enjoying myself. Picked up a medium format film camera a couple of weeks back. The Fuji Film GA645. This one is the professional version with the 60 mil lens. And I have to honestly say when I got it, um, I was pretty excited. Um, I've been wanting to find a point and shoot film camera on the medium format size that wasn't too crazy in price um, and see what I can do with it, see how it fits into my street photography setup. Um, I do enjoy shooting film and definitely enjoy shooting a uh, uh, 35 millimeter film when I'm out doing my street photography. And uh, this has not disappointed. Um, pretty much what I've seen from other YouTubers and uh, other stuff on the interweb about this camera, it definitely lives up to that. So I just want to basically go through what I got here, um, how I feel about what's going on here, and uh, kind of back up what a number of folks have been putting out there on the internet as far as what to look out for when getting, you know, cameras that are no longer in production. So um, you're probably wondering what that is. Uh, that is a, uh, that's a, that's a drink, yeah. Um, I'm pretty much into uh, dark rum and whiskeys as a whiskey drinker. Um, it's kind of easy to fall into some dark rum and get that strong flavor, caramelization, chocolate, car caramel type feel I tend to get from when I'm drinking whiskey. And, um, but right now though, that actually is some uh, doers in there. Um, I, I got it cut a little bit with some cola and a nice big ugly ball of ice. Um, but uh, that's just to, you know, keep me focused while I'm talking about this beauty right here. So right now, as you can see, I'm shooting with this guy and uh, I pretty much have in it um, some uh, Luma 800. Uh, right now it is set for aperture mode. And let me get that right. There you go, the line is set for the A. And one of the biggest things that I was worried about when I got this camera was finding one in a good condition, uh, great if possible, and not getting caught up in the prices I see on eBay. About a year ago, these things were going around the 500 and to the about the maybe 800 range. Now, depending on what you can get uh, along with this camera, accessories and so forth, uh, it's well over $1,000. Um, on the low end, I, I've seen this camera going for about $800. So I picked this up at my local camera store. I saw on their eBay uh, uh, store that this bad boy made it into the shop. Um, it comes with the lens hood, which is screw on. And then uh, you can see those threads right there. And then it also came with the original bag, which is kind of cool because the way this thing goes in a bag with the lens closed, you can have the uh, lens hood on or not and uh, it hangs right there. As you can see, I'm into Peak Design. So I use uh, Peak Design straps. Um, I love their strap system. I love how I can use these little anchors and uh, on all my cameras and just basically go from one camera to the other with the strap that I use and the, and the wrist strap, the cuff, I believe it's called. Um, looked over the camera, it was pretty clean. Um, also came with a little pouch that holds the, the uh, lens uh, ring, uh, lens hood, if you will, excuse me. Um, and the only issue with the camera was, and that's something that plagues this camera, uh, as far as I've seen on the internet, is on the LCD screen, uh, you can it can be pretty jumpy using the master up and down knob. As you basically rotate this, and I'll show you guys, so as I rotate this, again, it's on aperture priority. That eight, um, the, the, the aperture number reading will jump. It'll just jump all over the place. And, and that pretty much is just the case for anything that this dial uses. When it's in program mode, it's pretty much set to, and you just shoot. So the camera is doing everything it needs. But as you can see right here, it's set for data. 
And on that data feature, that basically will uh, allow the camera to shoot, uh, I believe it's an infrared beam of light on the film, putting on information, anything from the date, uh, the shooting mode that you're in, ISO and so forth, uh, the year, time, all that good stuff will be on the film after it's developed. So you would actually be able to see what, uh, what you did to get that wonderful picture. Um, and the other thing I noticed too when I got the camera was, well, this was after, uh, but before we go there, so that was like the biggest thing wrong with the camera, at least as it was advertised. Um, got a good deal on this bad guy. Uh, for what they wanted, I definitely got a lot less from the camera store because I buy um, other gear from them and uh, they have great customer service and they definitely took care of me on there. Got a little dirt on there, hold on. That's from my little table here. And as you can see from the video, this bad boy is clean. Now, I would open up the inside, but again, um, as you see, I'm on frame 13 of 16 for some Luma 800. And uh, as I'm talking here, you know, I'll interge interject some, sh some photos that I've taken with this camera so you can get an idea of how well it shoots and that wonderful lens. But uh, you got your timer for the time photo there, and it lets off a light on the front. After so many seconds, it speeds up and then bam, it takes a shot. Again, the data button that you see here is for uh, basically putting that information on the film frame. And then I got my flash button right there, which good press and it pops right up. Um, now it did pop up easier, but uh, I'll let you know in a second what, what I did here, because as I said earlier, um, you know, we had the little issues with the master up and down dial, which pretty much does a lot with this camera. It controls the film advance when you load the film. Um, it can, and again, it, it's what shifts between your f-stop, your shutter, um, a number of things. When you're pressing and holding down the autofocus button, you have to use this to move up and down. When you're pressing and holding down on the exposure compensation button, you have to hold that down and move this around and you can see as I'm holding it down, there it is. And if I move this, there it is. And this thing, again, it would jump all over the place. So I'll get back to the, let you know what I did there in a few minutes. But as I went through the whole camera, everything worked great. Like I said, everything looked great, very clean. Um, definitely wasn't used a lot by the uh, previous owner because I was able to use the um, um, holding down the data button, uh, I believe it is, and going into ISO mode, it'll let you know how many frames in the hundreds that have been shot. You can also use the certain other buttons to turn off and on the, uh, the sound for the beep. Um, and then also you can go from uh, uh, meters to feet when looking at the LCD screen for when you're in full manual mode. Um, I've yet to shoot this camera in manual mode. Uh, I pretty much got this to help me uh, fulfill my need for a point and shoot medium format film camera. So I pretty much shoot either in aperture priority or I shoot in uh, full program mode, which again, this thing has really worked out for me on that. Um, so as I got to the camera and did some test roll shots, um, saw that it was definitely going to be a keeper. So I then started to look and see what I can do to find out what or how I can fix the issue with the jumping uh, dial in and the LCD screen. Um, as I was trying to determine how to fix that, if it was even fixable, I discovered that the camera makes no sound. So once I figured out how to turn the sound off and on, I realized that uh, whatever that connection was or is, it is not working because the camera makes no sound, which doesn't bother me because I don't want to make sound when I'm taking shots to begin with. As you can hear when I blow through this frame and take this shot, you know, you get that film whine. It's not as loud as you'd think when you're amongst a bunch of people on a city street walking around doing some street photography. Folks barely hear it. So this thing has worked out pretty good as far as I'm concerned when it comes to uh, 
using this for some street photography. I love the images that have come out of this, but just like some folks have said, when it misses focus, it misses focus. Um, sometimes it's a good thing, especially doing street photography. A lot of times it's not. The other thing this one doesn't do that the zoom version does is uh, it does not have a little sensor on the uh, lens to let you know in the viewfinder that you still have the lens cap on. But luckily, I've only blown one frame doing that. So um, I'm happy that <laughs> I haven't really made that error a whole lot. So as I was looking online, I found a, a couple of uh, forum conversations that talked about um, how you can fix the problem. Uh, there's a couple of screws that you see like right here, right here. There's one in the back right here. There's one under the flash as well. As you remove those screws, you can slowly wiggle up the top cover and it gives you full access to a, the electronics that are under this dial. Um, decided to hit it with a couple of little light sprays of contact fluid, moved the dial while I was uh, doing that and it cleared the issue. It works like a charm. There's been no jumping. There's been no fidgeting. Um, I don't know if it's a permanent fix or not. I mean, it is, it's a cleaner. So that means at some point it'll probably get dirty again and I'll have to do it again, but it fixed the problem. Uh, at some point, I'm gonna try to see if I can find some information on uh, how to fix the sound, if I even want to go that far. Because again, as a person who shoots street photography, last thing I want is to have the autofocus beep going off on this thing and the last frame beeps going off on this thing. So one of the things I wanted to continue on with the video and uh, go over before I uh, end this and enjoy that finishing off that wonderful drink there is is some of the features. So I mentioned earlier that, you know, there's there's things you can do with putting the camera in ISO mode. And as you can see on this camera, um, there is a little lock button that you have to press down every time you want to move this dial. Um, after a while you get used to it so it's not as much of a nuisance so that's one thing one of the other things I wanted to go back to too is that when I did take the top off and cleaned off the uh, the up and down uh, dial um, it did uh, I, I did uh, kind of misalign the flash um, button lock and I did have to work on that but it's it doesn't pop open um, super easy like it did before it pops open easy so it still pops open easy, but not as smooth as it was before. As I've messed with it, it's gotten smoother. So I assume over time as I use a flash, especially as I get into situations where I need it, uh, that'll just continue to get better. So um, some of you may be thinking, hey, Warren, you, you talked about how you can determine how many frames you shot and changing it from feet to meters on the uh, LCD screen and all of that. So now as you guys will probably can tell, I'm, I'm using my iPhone on this. So, but what I'll do is tell you is, is that um, if you hold down the uh, exposure compensation button and at the same time you're pressing that down and you put this in ISO mode, it will tell you how many frames that you're at, okay? Uh, that'll again tell you in the range of um, hundreds. So if you see 700, that means you're in the 700 range of the number of photos that you've taken. If you wanna turn the sound off and on, you actually press down the, uh, the timer button and then as you're pressing that timer button in and holding it, you go ahead and put this in uh, ISO mode and it will show you um, basically, um, I'm sorry, that will turn the sound off and on. That's what turns the sound off and on. Um, if you want to move between feet and meters, that's actually the auto focus button uh, right there. You press and hold that down. And as you're pressing and hold that down and you go into ISO mode, it switches between feet and meter. So it'll sit there for about five seconds and it switches. Um, changing the date and changing the time uh, all works with the data button um, as you have this in either program mode, aperture mode, or um, manual, you can utilize the data button to uh, program the camera. 
Uh, so once you are in there, and let me go here, turn it on as you saw, that activates the camera. Now there's no film in this right now. So it's uh, showing zero. Uh, the 120, as you can see, that is actually determined by when you actually loading the film. So since I finished that roll, I'm gonna turn it back off here. I'm pressing down with the thumb and doing this one-handed, so bear with me. And then I'm gonna bring this knob down right there and then I'm gonna push it down and that opens up the body. And then right there is where you press down on the plate and slide it over to go between 120 and 220. Uh, 220 film is not being made anymore, so obviously it stays on 120. You can see the inside of this bad boy. And then what you can see too is how that up and down dial controls the sp spool that you wind the film on, you know? So let me swing this around. There's a little slot there, as you can see. That slot is where the film in would go in. And then you want to have this film in here and holding it a little firmly as it's coming across just to make sure it's taut. Because one of the things I've ran into with this camera, at least on uh, Luma, which is funny, Luma uh, uh, film, um, it sometimes doesn't catch it well enough. I don't see that as I'm bringing it in. And when it goes to finish winding that film after that 16th frame, it may, um, it may not wrap it tight. So I've actually had two Luma 800 rolls have a little bit of a light leak on them because it didn't wrap them tight. I didn't notice that. And when I took them out, um, I had to kind of finish, kind of t tighten it as best I can. So some of the pictures didn't come out too well. I actually lost uh, about a whole roll uh, because of it. So I've learned to make sure as I'm bringing the film across and advancing it with the button or the dial to make sure I got my, my fingers on it till it lines up with the uh, arrow. So, and uh, so that's pretty much the whole film loading part and what the inside looks like. Um, and then, you know, you close this down, give it a good press, put that down and then you're good. Once you put this in program or uh, aperture or, or media, or excuse me, manual mode, it will then wind the rest of the film and then you will see your number there showing that the film is, is uh, at frame one. So this counts each frame. So frame one through 16, it's not a countdown. It's just, it counts with each frame that's used. So if you're on frame 10, that means literally you are on frame 10, um, that not that you've shot 10 frames. Um, and uh, what you can see right here is the data. As I press the data button, you see that there's the date. If I press the, uh, in any of these two settings, and I'll go scroll back through this again and tell you what that's doing. But if I'm in right now the uh, blank mode, that means no data is gonna be imparted on the film. Uh, this is telling you the date is gonna be imparted on the film. This is gonna impart the time on the film. Here, I'll get my uh, some, some uh, uh, focusing and, and picture uh, information along with uh, some the date and time, and we'll turn that back on. Uh, it's, it'll flash for about five seconds and then bam, it goes back to it's ready to shoot mode. Um, if I want to see even more data, uh, I got one more option. So there's about five options you can scroll through. Um, but if I go back to the date and time and I press the autofocus button, it'll let me go ahead and start uh, putting in the date. And I go to the time and it'll press the autofocus button it'll let me scroll through each setting to set the time. So when that jumping issue was happening, that I, could, I couldn't even set it, it was that bad. So, so I do understand why this was priced to go. Um, and I, I, I consider it a nice uh, that I, uh, situation that I was able to use a little contact spray to clear that up for now. Again, I don't know how long that's gonna last. So with that, um, those are the things that I have to say that uh, I do watch out for as I'm learning to work with this camera is, is making sure that when I do low film that I'm, I am I got it a little taunt so that when it does wind, it's taunt and it will wrap completely around. But again, my only issue I've had has been with uh, Luma uh, 800 and L Luma brand, Luma 400 as well. Was, that was a role I lost com almost completely for t except for two frames. And um, um, 
and Sinistil 800. Almost, almost lost a roll of Sinistil 800, but it turned out uh, that I had two frames that had light leaks on them. So, so I do make sure that I make sure I have enough pressure on that film as I'm advancing it to, to get the arrow to where I need to, so I can reduce that light leak situation. So with that, um, that is pretty much really it. I want to go back to finishing this guy here. And I uh, just wanted to let you guys know I'm enjoying this camera. Um, the feature set is really nice. Um, it is really designed for a street shooter for sure. Ease of use. Um, I've enjoyed aperture priority and program. And I definitely have enjoyed the fact that uh, the winding of the film is quick and that it, uh, it really doesn't catch anybody's attention. Um, at some point I will figure out what's going on with the beep and see if there's some way I can fix that. And, uh, and just so it's fixed. And other than that, you guys enjoy YouTube. Have a good weekend, and I'll see you on the next video.